Hello and welcome to the Strategic Bookkeeper podcast. In today's episode, you're going to hear me interview Dr. Ivan Meisner. Right now, I'm going to read his bio and I tend to roll a bit more casually than that. So it sounds like I'm reading from something I am. But the reason I'd like to read this bio, which I don't always do with my guests, is to just give his background and his story the respect that it is due because Dr. Ivan Meisner is an extraordinary human. And when I say extraordinary human, I'm speaking to the impact that he's had on humans globally (laughs) through his work. So Dr. Ivan Meisner is the founder and chief visionary officer of Business Networking International, the world's largest business networking organization. Let's take that in for a moment. Founded in 1985, the organization has now over 11,000 chapters in 76 countries throughout every populated continent of the world. Last year alone, BNI generated 13.3 million referrals, resulting in more than $20.4 billion worth of business for its members. Dr. Meisner's PhD is from the University of Southern California. He is a New York Times bestselling author who has written 29 books, including his newest, The Third Paradigm, A Radical Shift to Create Greater Success. He is also a columnist for entrepreneur.com and has been a university professor as well as a member of the Board of Trustees for the University of Laverne. Ivan is called the father of modern networking, absolutely, by both Forbes and CNN. Dr. Meisner is considered to be one of the world's leading experts on business networking and has been the keynote speaker for major corporations and associations throughout the world. Dr. Meisner has been featured in the LA Times, Wall Street Journal, the New York Times, as well as numerous TV and radio shows, including CNN, the BBC, and the Today Show and NBC. He has traveled to all seven continents of the world, including Antarctica. Among his many awards, he has been named Humanitarian of the Year by the Red Cross and has been the recipient of the John C. Maxwell Leadership Award. He is especially proud that he and his late wife, Elizabeth, are the co-founders of the BNI Charitable Organization. Oh, and in his spare time, he is an amateur magician and a black belt in karate. I think from that bio, which again is, it speaks to Ivan's impact, yeah, on the world, okay? Extraordinary humans are turning up to contribute to the world, to the people that they serve. And that bio speaks to Ivan's impact and contribution. And so it is such a privilege and a pleasure to welcome him onto our podcast now. I'm Jeannie Savage, the strategic bookkeeper. I've been in practice for 14 years, but more importantly, five years in, I achieved a lifestyle practice. This means I scaled my business, could take my hands off the wheel and draw a nice six figure income while being time rich. And that's what I call my dream on my terms. I was recently awarded Women in Finance Innovator of the Year, recognizing my book, my podcast, my program, and my impact globally. The Strategic Bookkeeper is my life's work and the opportunity to help bookkeepers globally achieve the income and lifestyle that sets them free absolutely fills my cup. Please do connect with me on socials at the Strategic Bookkeepers Way private Facebook group or shoot me an email, hello at the strategicbookkeeper.global. Welcome, Ivan, and thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Thank you. It's it's great to be on. I appreciate the invite. Wonderful. And I am excited to have you on today because business networking is something that I talk to bookkeepers globally about doing, about enjoying, because it was so impactful for me in my bookkeeping practice, which I started 14 years ago. It was how I built my practice and I got a lot of 
personal and professional development out of it. And so I was hoping that you are going to come on the show today <laughs> and help me inspire bookkeepers to, as I say, not just do networking, but actually learn how to enjoy networking. So I would just love, I know you've got a bookkeeper story as well, but I'd love for you to share a bit about yourself that may help us and maybe that story as well. Well, I, mean, I think everyone would assume that the founder of BNI, we have 11,100 chapters now in 75 countries. I think everyone would assume he's got to be an extrovert. And okay, just between us, I assumed that until about, I don't know, 15, 20 years ago, my late wife said to me, we were, we were talking at dinner and I said something about, oh, honey, you know me, I'm an extrovert. And she's like, um, no, you're not. I'm like, what? What do you mean I'm not an extrovert? you're not an extrovert at all. You're an introvert. Okay. I'm not an introvert. I run the world's largest networking organization. I'm a public speaker. I, I, I am not an introvert. She's like, oh, okay, whatever you say, honey, that's fine. I'm like, no, you, <laughs> no, you can't say that. She said, well, look, you're, you, you, and then she, she had been reading this book called the, the extrovert and introvert in love. And so she starts describing the characteristics of an introvert. And I'm like, yeah, that's a little like me. That's a little like me. And, and, then, it, and then there was the one where introverts um, have to recharge their batteries by being alone, not, not, by, mm -hmm. not by being in a group of people. And like, okay, that's totally me, but I am not an introvert. And she's like, okay, whatever you say. So now I'm annoyed and I go into my office at home and I um, get on the internet and I take this test by being an introvert or an extrovert. It says, congratulations, Ivan Meisner, you are an introvert. You're a situational extrovert. That's what it called oh. me, a situational extrovert. So under the right situations, I come across as an extrovert. Otherwise, I'm generally an introvert. Go apologize to your wife. Okay, I didn't say that last part, but I did. I went and apologized. And, and it was a real eye-opener for me because I realized that the network I created was for introverts. I mean, you think about it. I could have created a network that was a big mixer, hundreds of people, mingling, mixing, meeting people, but I didn't like that. I yeah. felt uncomfortable with that. The network that I created was small, intimate, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 people getting together every week, getting to know each other, trust each other, build relationships with each other. Um, and I thought, wow, I can't believe this but I created a network for introverts. Yet I always assumed I was an extrovert because I was running the company, but it wasn't true. And my late wife was the one who, who very adeptly pointed that out to me. I love this story. And I met Ivan in the States. I was fortunate enough to win a competition <laughs> where I got to fly to the States and meet Ivan. And I heard this story and I try and relay it to others <laughs> and it never comes across that well. And the reason I love it is, yeah, the same thing. Actually, Ivan, people at BNI, my business buddies, my networking buddies, often said to me, oh, you're a natural networker. But what they were saying is you're an extrovert. And I, I think I knew when they said it that, like, I was thinking to myself, mm, I'm not necessarily a natural networker. I'm an extrovert. So maybe that means... I'm more comfortable kind of barreling up to people, right? <laughs> and, and that kind of thing. But when we met and I discovered this, it was a big light bulb moment for me. And then in terms of my connection to the strategic bookkeeper and wanting to help women globally that are primarily almost all bookkeepers are introverts, it was really yeah. exciting to me that these bookkeepers saying, I can't make networking work. I thought this has been built for introverts. So it gave me more confidence that on top of the BNI systems, and I think that's, for me, it's like this is a system that works well for introverts, but it's a system that is so systemized, right, which yeah. means you don't have to turn up and be an extrovert with hustle yeah. and grunt. It gave me this confidence that on top of all those systems, I could make this work for bookkeepers. Yeah, look, BNI and and. Networks that are, meet on a weekly basis where people get to know each other and trust each other uh, are, I think, made for introverts because, um, listen, extroverts have no problem meeting people. They can meet anybody. <laughs> they have no problem. And they'll talk to anybody. And what's their favorite subject? Themselves. <laughs> they love to talk about themselves. That doesn't make a good networker. 
A good networker has two ears and one mouth and uses them both proportionately. A good networker is like, it's like this interview. You ask me questions, you allow me to elaborate. That's what a good networker is. Well, you know what? Introverts are great at listening. They're really good at that. They have a hard time meeting people. Okay, I get it. But there are ways around that. There are ways to deal with that. But when you meet people, the networkers are, are really good at asking questions and getting people to open up and talk. And um, introverts are great at that. So for me, BNI is perfect for introverts because it allows them to get to know people, trust people, build a relationship, ask questions, get to know someone. It's also okay for extroverts who like to talk about themselves. So it's like the perfect combination. And until my late wife pointed out that I was basically a closet introvert, I didn't realize it. And, you know, just relating to my own experience and other bookkeepers, I think one of the things I went to BNI thinking and having, I was raised by an international sales trainer in a retail family, right? <laughs> Plus I'm an extrovert. So for me, when I walked into BNI for the first time ever, I think my mentality was that it was about making a sale. You know what I mean? Yeah. And yes, you're right, Ivan, like my son and I were extroverts everywhere we go, a supermarket, we talk to everyone, right? But the bookkeepers will walk in. And I think that that is a mentality that a lot of us tend to have. And when it comes to those introverts, when they fail to just barrel in and get that traction in two seconds and feel the love, so to speak, because the love comes when you get to know people, when you slow mm -hmm. down and build a relationship. Yeah. So when, yeah. okay, I could go in and I could dazzle and delight in two seconds, but I needed to, like you say, learn over time that it was much more about turning up on time or early, looking someone in mm -hmm. the eye, shaking their mm -hmm. hand, saying good morning, <laughs> you know. And so yeah. for the bookkeepers to, I feel, to have this light bulb moment to understand that when you go into the networking, it's not about making a sale, right? No, it's not. It's I have always said that you know networking is more about farming than it is about hunting. It's about Ooh. cultivating relationships. And when you go to a networking event, it's really, a, particularly a group where you're meeting every week, like in BNI, it's about training a sales force, not making a sale. It's about training people who will refer you, not training people who will sell your product or service but training people who will refer you. And that's the key, is teaching them how to refer you. Mm, yeah, okay. And so in that way, I guess some other things that I want to share about my story and our story, having met you, I love this because when I have the bookkeepers in my transformation program and I talk to them a lot about networking and I keep you know, sharing a similar concept in a new way. And when they go in and they do their, whether you call it manager minute, you know, that spotlight. Yeah. Just yesterday I was doing more information for them on networking. And I said that spotlight is really, from my point of view, it's really about, because I often promote wincing and repeating the core same message every week because mm. that's about the opportunity to get another moment with those people in the room, you know, with the dance cards, for example. So mm -hmm. when people are learning, rather than, again, this idea that I think really does not serve bookkeepers or anyone, that when we go in and do that spotlight, it's about selling, right? And Ivan, I was once at a networking group and I was at my networking group after you and I met, which changed everything. I slowed down and I relaxed and I began to understand that networking for me as an extrovert, one of the lessons was that it was about communication, right? Yeah. And I was a visitor host at the time and an accountant came in and it comes a book that are introverts that have this mentality, I need to go in and sell. Sometimes they they say silly things because they're trying to be, as I call it, a gazelle in an elephant suit, right? Just be a beautiful gazelle. If you're an introvert, be an introvert. And the accountant came up to me probably very nervously and he said, hello. And then he blurted out when someone else said, Jeannie's a bookkeeper and you're an accountant. Like I thought I would introduce you. And he said, hello, I'm, you know, Stephen and all the bookkeepers I meet are terrible. <laughs> I know, I mean, and there was this mix for me of I really, because you and I had met and in that moment I knew that this poor man was actually attempting to get it right 
And because you and I had met and I'd learned about communication and I realized, oh my goodness, like it, he's just broken all the rules of just shake my hand, look me in the eye and just say good morning. <laughs> you know? Yeah, he totally blurted out the wrong thing. He, he may have meant it well, but he blurted out the wrong thing for sure. He did. And actually at the time, I actually thought suddenly in my heart, my feeling was this is his journey to go on. It's not, I can't in that moment explain what went wrong, but if he joins a chapter and he begins to get to know everyone, I think he'll have that moment when he realizes, yes. oh my goodness, I can I just do. be myself. One could hope. Yeah. So when the bookkeepers go in trying to be something and trying to get it right and trying to sell rather than, you know, they'll they'll often feel like I'm an introvert. You know, I'm maybe I'm a, we tend to be a little nerdy. We bookkeepers, we love our tech. And I kind of say lean in. <laughs> Oh, yeah, totally lean in. Absolutely lean in. So um, we had uh, one person years, I hadn't planned on telling the story, but we had one person who was a a bookkeeper um, many, many years ago in BNI. And she was about to speak because in in BNI, as you know, every so often you're the featured presenter, featured speaker, and you, you talk for about 10 minutes about your business. And I'll never forget, she said, if I have to talk, I quit. We were like, what? She said, no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to stand up and talk for 10 minutes in front of everybody. I, I'm not going to do it. And we're like, why? Because, you know, we want you to tell people who you are, what you do, go into more detail. Because every week in BNI, 30 seconds or a minute, depending on how big the chapter is, it's not enough time to really go deep. So this gives you a chance to go a little deeper. And she's like, okay, I quit. We're like, no, no, don't quit. <laughs> what you know? What's going on? She's like, I can't. I can't. It takes all my energy to stand up and do twenty seconds of my one minute. I, I I can't do ten minutes. And I'll never forget. I said to her, "Okay, let it go. You don't have to. You don't. If you don't want to do a presentation, you don't have to." She's like, "Really?" I'm like, "No, you don't have to." I said, "And now this was this was in the eighties. Okay, it was a long time ago. I'm I'm old. I got a lot of gray hair. Um, <laughs> it was in the eighties. I said to her." We just had a, a change in tax law. And I said, do you think you could give a test to the members? She said, a test? Yeah, we just asked 10 questions, true or false, about tax law, bookkeeping, tax law. Could you do that? She said, yeah, I could do that. I said, okay, do that. Don't speak. You're not a speaker. You're just going to stand up, ask a question, give the answer. That's it. She said, I can do that. So she stood up. She was like, I don't know, five minutes into it. She was in her third or fourth question, fifth question. She's, you know, asking people, is this true or false? People would say true or false. And, you know, half of the audience was like, oh my goodness, I'm going to go to jail. (laughs) I'm missing all of these questions. I can't believe this. And now she starts speaking extemporaneously. She's explaining why that's true or why that's false. And it's, and she just relaxed into it. And she actually, she went to her 10 minutes and she wasn't finished. And, you know, they had to bring her down to sit down because she became so comfortable with talking about her expertise. It's like, you don't have to speak. Just talk about what you know. Mm-hmm. And what she knew was tax law and bookkeeping and accounting. And so we're like, just give a test. And she did that and it was brilliant. So there are so many ways, there are techniques and things that people can do to make their behavioral style fit the needs of the connections that you want to make in a network. And she nailed that. And this is the lean in, right? Like it's the lean into your units and who you are, like go down that because that's what, is going to connect you with everyone. Like you say, this, like I actually, Ivan, when I was going to B&I, and and even though I'm an extrovert, I'm, I love bookkeeping. (laughs) I love it. Always have. And I'm a bit of a nerdy IT kind of bookkeeper. So I'm not someone that finds it natural to go shopping for clothing, right? I love, I love clothes. And people would think you're great at this genie, but that's not me. So I got myself a uniform. You know what I mean? It was like a nice shirt with a logo and 
because I had a pretty difficult child, I was doing well if I turned up with it the right way in, right? <laughs> Not inside out. That has happened before. I think it's happened to every mom. <laughs> um, wait, 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 wait. Were, you turned with, with what inside out? Well, I never did it at BNI, but I'm telling you, my child is um, neurodiverse. And when he was little and he was so difficult, there were the occasional day, and most mums tell me this has happened to them, where you put your clothes on inside out. <laughs> <laughs> I, that's hysterical it's such a mum thing when i tell mum it probably like, oh, is me yeah. too me too i did that too where you're just you're just going on fumes but in an effort to turn up more as myself like as someone who i was at bni it was apparent to me that the way that you dressed even though even though the way that we dress has nothing to do with our skill set First impressions matter and therefore... Oh, they do. The they do. I, you're, you're, right, you're absolutely they do. correct. They do. And so rather than... I'm a real process girl. So I went, okay, rather than risk getting it wrong because I'm a bit clueless with fashion, if I go and get a beautiful uniform and it's got my logo, I know I'm always going to get it right. It was kind of going, okay, my Eunice, I'm not someone that can figure out which outfit to wear that's not going to offend anyone, is going to make everyone feel indifferent to my clothing being attached to the job I can do. And I think this lean in, you know, whoever you are, I, I do, I love it when I see bookkeepers just really lean into who they are. And with the tests that you're talking about, I love that too because in my program, look, I do help bookkeepers with how to get up, do their presentation. We have all the collateral for them. One of the things I give them is we give them a done for you health check, which is a test for business owners, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. now I can see how, and oftentimes it's just, oh, I'll leave it on the desk. But, and it is one of the most powerful self-assessing assets that we can give anyone, right? Because it helps them like have those moments you talked about where it's, I'm terrified. I'm going to end up in jail for tax fraud. I didn't know all this, right? And I love to say, even though I was raised by an international sales trainer, especially in bookkeeping, but I actually think worldwide with the death of marketing and the rise of PR, selling is dead, self-assessing is in. And that kind of test simply helps people to self-assess. And I can understand why the bookkeeper kept speaking beyond the 10 minutes because personally- Well, she got I, excited. She got engaged. Yes. She was immersed in She's her excited. expertise. Yeah. yeah, her expertise. And suddenly she sees people in the room that need help and that she can help. And that's exciting. Right. And, and they <laughs> lit up. When she spoke, they lit up because- she was, she, you know, I think entrepreneurs are either working in their flame or working in their wax. And when they're working in their flame, they're on fire. They're excited. They love what they're doing. You could hear it in their voice. You can see it in the way they behave. When they're working in their wax, it takes all their energy away. And you can hear that in their voice and you can see that in the way they behave. Well, this bookkeeper was, that was her flame. And I, well, a lot of the people in the room, that was their wax, you know, <laughs> they didn't like it. But to listen to her be so excited about the accounting and bookkeeping and le legal issues, it, it got their interest. It was perfect. Yes, I think ex I, this is exactly what I can relate to. It's when, and I say to bookkeepers to help them with public speaking, something I learned from James Wedmore, which I call the value approach. And it's that, because I've always been nervous too, and I get it, get on to do anything. But if I can stop for a moment and say to myself, Jeannie, it's not about what you're about to say. Or it's about the value that you can give to the people in the audience, whether that's one person, right. five people, 60 people. And if right. through what I say, I can reach just one person and give them value that helps them do better in their business or life. Yes. You know, yeah, and absolutely. that's when, you know, the passion and suddenly your voice gets, you know, and that kind of thing. So in terms of when the bookkeepers turn up to do their, manager minute too. I when we had this ad campaign in Australia years ago and it was like a taxation thing. And they had a on the TV this lady doing the tax return again, super boring. Everyone thinks our jobs are the most boring in the world. They're actually super exciting. We get to lift the hood on businesses, right? But they had this lady and she was sitting there doing the boring stuff and suddenly she would save money and she just did this yes, you know <laughs> it was the lean in. It was the, we all, this woman just saved someone money and yes. saving time and yes. money never gets tired. 
And that's important. So let me tell you a bookkeeper story, uh, because to me, this is one of the best stories that I've got about you know, hiring people when you need them. And when I was very new in business, I'd only been running BNI for a short period of time. One of the first people that I wanted to hire was a bookkeeper. Because look, I know my way around a financial statement. I can handle financial statements, but I just, it's not my, it's not my area of expertise. It's not my, it's not my flame, right? So I hired a bookkeeper and I'll never forget. It was like the first 30 or 60 days, she came to me and she said, uh, Ivan, the books were off by five pennies, five cents. Took me a couple hours, but I found it. The books are balanced. And I said, well done, good job. And I told a friend of mine that, and he said, well, did you reprimand her? And I said, why would I reprimand her? He said, well, because she spent two hours to find five cents. And I said, oh, no, 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 I did not reprimand her. I congratulated her. He said, why? I said, because what if it were $50? If it were $50, I, I would be like, eh, hey, it's close enough. <laughs> you know, we're close enough, 50 bucks. Her, she wouldn't go home at night. <laughs> it was $50. And so she would be all in. Why? Because that's her flame. Mm. That was her passion, was getting the books right. It was, it was not my passion. It was important. Don't get me wrong. Getting the books right, very important. But it's not my skill set. So I love to tell that story about that bookkeeper, because to me, it's such a great example of living your flame, whatever that is. If that wasn't my flame, that was her flame. God mm -hmm. bless her. Thank goodness for her uh, because she was great at it, but it was not my flame. Uh, I love bookkeepers. I love what they do because I'm not good at it. And this is um, what you said there. Like, I love that because this is why I have this podcast episode called Know Your Terms, Back Yourself, and Then Value the Heck Out of Your VOPs. And in my bookkeeping practice, one of my kind of charters, one of my things is that we want to work with clients who, who follow the systems we give us. And, you know, what I heard there was something is so wonderful for a bookkeeper is to be trusted to be in their zone of genius um, yes. because Ivan, when I was working in my family's business and it, we grew it from 10 to 100 million, so big financial areas, my mother was heading up the finances and if you were five pennies out, you had to stay, <laughs> you had to find it. It didn't matter how long it took. <laughs> five pennies. <laughs> five pennies. And interestingly, she said that five pennies could be two different out of balance amounts in a big business. You might be missing a hundred thousand dollars. And it was this, <laughs> it's a bit crazy. But you know, these days in small business bookkeeping, if we kind of, you know, we we massage the books a bit to do something different, but to trust a bookkeeper in her zone of genius. And I often say to, yeah. to my bookkeepers, if you meet a prospective client that wants to kind of tell you how to suck eggs, wants to tell you how to do your job. It's not going to end very well because that's a bit like you telling the electrician how to do his job. We're probably going no. to <laughs> end up in hospital. Not going to end up well. I used to yes. work at a hardware. I used to work at a um, a paint and glass shop uh, many, 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 many years ago. I was much younger, and they had this sign up that said, um, "A labor twenty dollars an hour. Uh, if you watch, it's twenty five dollars an hour. If you help, it's thirty dollars an hour." And <laughs> <laughs> and Everyone I think that's a great example that. of, you know, just stay out of people, stay out of the experts way, let them do their job. By the yes. way, that, that woman 10 years later found somebody in my company that was embezzling money from me. Mm -hmm. And that's how important a bookkeeper can be. They can find not only five pennies, they can find a lot of money that yeah. may be going in the wrong. I've never said that on a, on an interview before, by the way, but that bookkeeper yeah. found somebody who was embezzling money from me and, and we caught that person as a result. I would go as far as to say is once you're working in finance, like I have been since I was, oh my goodness, I'm 52 now since I was 15. I've been working in 52. finance. 52, come on, you're not 52. Thank you, I am. <laughs> Good food, lots of exercise. <laughs> I'm impressed. We're we're on uh, Zoom. This is this is audio, but uh, we're, we're on video, and you do not look fifty. I look every bit of sixty-seven, just for the record. My beautiful son uh, compliments me every day, even though he's a little biased. 
But um, yeah, I think every bookkeeper will be exposed to that. Unfortunately, every few years, often I I find uh, things happening in the books. And only a couple of years ago, I um had to help a client who's now he was on the brink of bankruptcy. He now makes um a million dollars a year in profit. But one of the things was somebody embezzling. And unfortunately, we get so good at spotting it, <laughs> we accidentally can see the body language without realizing we've got to that part in our career. So it's amazing, but I know we're digressing. So as we wrap up the podcast, what I would love, Ivan, because I know, you know, I think sometimes the things that make networking work are not the things that people think. And so I I have a free, for all the listeners, I do actually have a recorded uh, how to make networking work free training as well as what we do in the program. And we're going to, I'm working with my team to create a starter membership and we'll put that in there. So if you are, if you are dying for that particular free training, send us an email and and the email is all included in the show notes and we let you know that. But basically, Ivan, when I talk to bookkeepers about how to make networking work, the first thing I say, (laughs) they're often not getting right, turn up early. (laughs) Yeah, well, 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 bookkeepers should be good at that. They're very punctual, I would think. Um, yeah, but sometimes early, early, again, don't be it's afraid. About... It's all about it's all about building relationships. It's you know, if you go into it understanding that it's not about selling, mm. it's about getting to know people. And um introverts, and as you agreed, bookkeepers tend to be introverts, have no problem getting to know people on a personal level. And so if you go into it understanding that, networking, networking's great, it's easy, it's the best way to get business. I mean, it look, I, I got no problem advertising. Advertising's fine. I have no problem. If you want to go out and do, do direct selling, that's fine. But networking is so nice. It's so easy. It's just you get to know people, trust people, and they refer you. Otherwise, you basically, you know, if you're if you're if you're hunting versus farming, you basically eat what you kill that day. Catch and kill. If you're, if you're farming, you're just building relationships with people. Absolutely. This is, uh, that is the fact. It took me a very long time to learn this, but now when I launched the Strategic Bookkeeper Project, which is absolutely my life's work, we spend no advertising dollars and where we do a lot of networking with our suppliers. Mm. And so we do that. But I think in terms of, you know, that, that message that you had, and I'd love to give my spin on that is when we go in and we're building relationships and getting to know each other, you said on a personal level, because it's not always about like, yes, we want to get to know the business stuff, but I have learned again, it's taken me a very long time because I'm a natural ex- extrovert that wants to go catch and kill, hunt and talk about myself. But I've learned that where the magic happens in these business relationships is the personal stuff is I'm a mom, yeah. you know, I just Speaking to someone in the UK the other day, Ivan, and this is such a lesson on those personal personal relationships, is he an amazing CEO. We had a fantastic meeting, but the only time he took pen to paper is when we talked about his daughter coming to Australia. You know what I mean? This is the stuff that matters. It's mm-hmm. the bit my father used to have to have a saying about business, nobody cares and it doesn't matter. What we really deeply care about is getting into that behind the scenes personal relationships. So I think yeah. bookkeepers are great at that. Yes, they are. Yeah. Look, my bookkeeper, you know, I, I don't run B and I uh the day-to-day operations anymore. I, I've kind of gone from being King Arthur leading the charge to being Colonel Sanders, being the spokesperson for the organization. But when I ran the business, my bookkeeper knew more about me than my mom did. <laughs> she she knew every element of my business. Yeah. And so bookkeepers to lean in and be yourself and go in and again, shake someone's hand, introduce yourself. You don't even have to talk about your business so much in those first moments. Just Le- Not like right away. Say, no, no, no. You lean into no. that gradually. Yeah. Yeah. And follow the system and that will happen. And in my program, I help everyone with their manager minutes. I had someone write one up yesterday. I'm very good at speaking client. And so I can yeah. take that bookkeeper pitch that might be a bit more about what they do and make it about why they do it. So that's where... I can help yeah. connect the audience, you know. But again, I think just turn. Well, that's up- the thing with the weekly with the weekly presentations. If I can just mention it, the weekly yes. presentations that you're talking about, uh, what you want to look for are the afters. Oh. What will be life like after you come in and help them? 
what will be what will things be like after you come in and do the work that you do that's what that's what entrepreneurs want to know they don't want to yes. know what you're going to do they want to know what things will be like after you do what you're going to do yes after yes the critical element of and uh, i weekly. want every bookkeeper around the world to re-listen to that bit and all my tribe that are in my program to re-listen to that bit this is exactly what I teach bookkeepers because they want to talk about the before or the vehicle, as I call it. But if you just try and look at that and focus on the after, and I will give everyone one, bookkeeping is the vehicle, yeah, to create the better in business. So if you want to do better in business, start with a bookkeeper. (laughs) You know, if you want to optimize your profit, start with a bookkeeper. If you want to optimize your cash flow, start with a bookkeeper. If you want to pull time out of your business, start with a bookkeeper. And there is the after, right? Which I totally agree. That was the first position I hired for my company after my assistant. So it was my assistant and then a bookkeeper was next. And use that. Go to BNI and say, why did Ivan Meisner, (laughs) the head of BNI, why was his second hire a bookkeeper? Because a bookkeeper will help you to do better in business, optimize your profit, help you make business decisions. So yeah. the after, yep, absolutely, really exciting. I could talk about this forever, but I will, I'm going to <laughs> wrap it up and let Ivan go. I feel like we've got some, and um, I feel like bookkeepers can use this like a mini course. Listen to it over and over. Make notes and a master class in networking. Just yeah, one thing so I'll leave. Exciting. I'll leave with your with your bookkeepers is that um, the foundation of everything I teach is VCP. Visibility, credibility, profitability. First, you got to be visible. People have to know who you are, what you do. Then you establish credibility. They know who you are. They know what you do. They know you're good at it. Then and only then can you get to profitability where people are willing to refer you. And so you want to do networking, not to close a deal, but to build a relationship and to work your way through the VCP process, visibility to credibility to profitability. Write that down. That is such an introvert's <laughs> networking process. <laughs> yeah, it's perfect. Absolutely golden. The, the long game is everything, right? My program yeah. will be to say, do I really need to spend a year with you, Jeannie? And then some, right? We're not going to make a transformation in a no. week or a month. Give me a year. No, so, never, yeah. never. It takes time. Yeah. Which is okay. a networking. I mean, you know, it's a marathon, not a sprint. It is a marathon, not a sprint. That is, you get so much more out of it than the business as I did. Bookkeepers, we're we're very black and white and linear. So we tend to think, give me the information, give me the system, and it'll work in two seconds, won't it? But humans, we're not robots, we're not machines. It'd be a lot easier if we were. Business would be so much easier if there weren't people, but there are. And you Yes, yes. Logic and reason doesn't always come into it to me. No, it doesn't. (laughs) Beautifully flawed human beings stumbling along with the illusion of control, as I like to call it. (laughs) I love that. That's a great phrase. (laughs) Thank you. It's a geniusm. It's a genie original. Geniusm, I love it. Right. Genieism. I got so many made up words. Thank you so much for coming on the show. It was amazing. Oh, my pleasure. Anytime. Thank you so much for inviting me. Okay, my friend. Now it is time to take action. So, what are you going to do with what you learned today? The way I see it, you've got two options. You can go it alone to try and save some money, or you can back yourself and go for it and join my tribe. And let me tell you, we are knocking it out of the ballpark. That's not a sales pitch. That is me serving you, dare I say, courageously. To find success, I 100% know you need the mechanics, which is like the keys to the kingdom, but you also need to get your mindset right and be super productive. And these are all things I help you with inside the program. I could go on about this forever because I really want this for you. Have a prosperous week and I'll see you in the next episode.